Hi everyone, my name is Junon. I have a health science background and I'm the author of the book Truth and Empathy, How to Find Your Soulmate. And I'll put the link to the book uh, below. This video is about the importance of your resting breathing rate for overall health, specifically for adults. And uh, this information is uh, not well known by a lot of people. So uh, myself, when I stumbled on it a number of years ago, I was kind of baffled uh, because I think most of us know that we need to breathe to stay alive, but we don't know uh, the importance of breath for so many areas of our health. And I would strongly suggest to um, read the book by uh, Patrick McEwen. He's an Irish um, breathing trainer. Uh, the book is uh, titled The Oxygen Advantage. You also can check the book by Jim Nestor. Um, he wrote the book uh, Breath, uh, The New Science of the Lost Heart, and it just came out last year. Uh, excellent book that really uh, going to all the biochemistry and, and, I mean, great job. And also they have a number of videos on YouTube. I watch them regularly. Great job. I have uh, an interest in natural health and I took an energy healing course, and uh, then I started experimenting. And what I've noticed is that time and time again, my clients would tell me that their breath, their resting rate would actually change. Uh, and I'm talking like 95% of the time. And obviously, if something happens 95% of the time, you know it's not by accident. So I started taking notes. I said, okay, well, maybe there's something there. And then I realized that uh, uh, one of the major um, physical markers that actually changes when someone becomes healthier, it is their resting breathing rate. And some of them, it was dramatic. For instance, there was this lady um, and, you know, who had uh, actually cancer, told me that her breathing rate before um, the treatment was 30 breaths per minute, and it went down to 10 breaths per minute. And I'm talking about within a period of like 10 minutes. So it would happen automatically, it, it's, it was effortless, so that really intrigued me. And um, I would also really suggest that people also check out uh, the work by uh, uh, Buteco. His name, actually his full name is uh, Constantine Buteco, he's an Ukrainian doctor um, who actually also uh, saw the link between uh, improving someone's health and their resting breathing rate. And one of the first things that people need to understand is that um, most people hyperventilate, and they hyperventilate through the mouth. Uh, let's say if you look at many uh, medical textbooks, they will tell you that normal resting breathing rate is between 12 and 20 breaths per minute. And based on what I have observed, anyone who breathes more than 16 times a minute has some kind of a physical or mental health issue. Actually, mental health you are pretty much, you know, guaranteed if you breathe more than 16 times a minute. And one of the main reasons is that when a person breathes um, more than 16 times a minute, and actually I think that, you know, it, the normal resting breathing, especially according to Briteco, is around 12 breaths per minute. So when people hyperventilate, they breathe through the mouth and they tend to expel too much carbon dioxide. And I know that we've been told that carbon dioxide is a waste uh, uh, product and that you need to get in, you know, take in as much oxygen as possible and get, in and get rid of carbon dioxide as much as possible. But because the Bohr effect, and that was uh, discovered around 1905, is that for the red blood cells to deliver oxygen to the tissues, you need enough carbon dioxide in your tissues. And when a person hyperventilates and they expel too much carbon dioxide, what happens is that the red blood cells hold on to the oxygen molecules and they, and, and they don't deliver the oxygen to the tissues. So it, essentially, you have a, a body that in all the cells are not getting proper oxygenation. So that's one of the first things that you notice. And um, also, breathing through the mouth triggers um, a fight or flight response. So the person breathes in, in the level of the chest instead of breathing uh, more in, in near the abdomen. So in terms of it's not 
um, aphromatic uh, breathing. Because if you're breathing through the nose, what's going to happen is that you're going to uh, breathe small amount of air. It's going to be air that's been filtered, warmed, uh, sanitized, and really the, that that air is really uh, you know well conditioned to enter the body. But that does not happen when when a person breathes through the mouth. So the quality of the air also is very much uh, affected if you breathe through the nose versus through the mouth. Then what happens is that when a person hyperventilates, there's not enough time for oxygen, um, actually uh, exchange of gas. Because if you hyperventilate really fast, the air doesn't have time to really go down into the lungs and have time to have uh, the gas exchange so that your body is getting enough oxygenation. To summarize is that people need to breathe through the nose versus to the mouth so that they don't expel too much carbon dioxide so that the when they breathe through the nose, they uh, activate the, the diaphragm, there's better gas exchange, uh, the air is better quality, so in the, it's filtered, it's warmed, it's sanitized. Uh, so also the, the, it's humidified, and then also it has a calming effect on the all the body because you're not triggering the fight or flight response. So I trust that uh, this video was informative. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and we will talk soon.